Um, my question involves the impact of focusing on two different sets of desires and uh, that impact on my creative power and the manifestation. Um, There's no negative impact. You could have a thousand different desires if all of them make you feel good when you focus upon them. As long as you're focusing upon the end of the stick of the desire that feels life-giving, then you are allowing all things that you want to come to fruition. Um, I've heard you uh, recommend in a workshop fashion um, writing down three desires to start with, let's say, um, to do focus you, on. Do you know why? Do you, do, you, do you know that when we encourage you to write a desire down, yes. it's not because you need it to write it down to create it. Mm -hmm. It's that in writing your desire for the time of the writing, you hold yourself in vibrational alignment with it. So it's an exercise of allowing what you want. Right. There, are, We want to hear you, but we want to stick this in real quick. There are three steps to the process. Step one is ask. Life causes you to do that. You can't not ask. Step two is the answering to what you're asking. Source does that. You heard us explain that. In the moment that you ask, source becomes it. That is quite an answer and calls you toward it. Step three is you must allow what you're asking for. So when you sit with the three things that are really important to you and you write about what you want and why you want it, there is a pretty good opportunity for you to deliberately align with the essence of your desire. It's the equivalent of letting go of the oars because you can't talk about what you want and why you want it without turning downstream. Mm -hmm. When you talk about what you want and how you're going to get it, if you don't know how you're going to get it, you often turn upstream. When you talk about what you want and who will bring it or when it will come or where it will come from, as you ask these questions that you don't have answers to, it almost always turns you upstream and makes you doubt and feel powerless. But when you write about what you want and why you want it, it almost always causes you to let go of the oars. Mm -hmm. It's a exercise of closing the gap. In fact, every process that we've ever offered is about closing that gap. Not one, not one process is necessary for creating life causes you to ask and source answers every process is a process to help you turn downstream right. to let go of a little more resistance and um, I can definitely feel that uh, when I'm focused on visualizing uh, all that I'm wanting and appreciating having it vibrationally because you've got hold of it. In other words, when you start to visualize something, it's like you're saying, I'm in charge of this thought process and I am deliberately directing my thoughts visually, mentally toward positive outcomes. Downstream, 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 downstream. Where sometimes life just catches you off guard and you have a knee jerk upstream reaction to it. But when you sit deliberately to write or visualize, you get a better handle on where you're going. Do you ever find in the beginning of a visualization process that sometimes thoughts of what you don't want creep in or even dominate at first what do you do about it anytime uh, any negative thought starts coming in I just try and focus back on perhaps something else that I'm very positive about. And, and do you find that since it's all in your head anyway yeah that in a visual visualization setting that even though a negative thought might creep in and turn you upstream that since you're just visualizing it's just air mm -hmm. that it's easier for you to get it and turn it than it would be in the middle of an argument so to speak right. or in the middle of a real life manifestation where you're observing something upstream mm -hmm. so if I can create I, I guess um, especially throughout most of my early 20s I was just throwing all kinds of ideas out there uh, in terms of things that I wanted to do and achieve and uh, you know coming before, into this before you go further we want to stick something else in hold that thought because we like where you're going but we want you we want you to contemplate this in light of the whole of what you're asking for here when you deliberately conjure an image 
for the purpose of creating we want you to understand that so often people think well I'm gonna sit and do my creating now and we want you to understand that all that visualization is is practicing right. the vibration of letting what you've already asked for in that this is just vibrational practice all that visualizing is not making something happen mm -hmm. it's letting something that's already happened in that's such an important distinction you're not creating with your affirmations you're not creating with your visualizations you are practicing a vibration that lets it in so the more visualizing you do the more you set a tone that lets more in mm -hmm. so now we want to go back to the very first thing that you ask because it's so important this is the way we heard it if I have two or three or five or ten but let's say two things that I really want do I split my energy by focusing upon two things mm -hmm. rather than giving my undivided attention to one thing that I want and we want to say to you two things that you sort of kind of believe are much more powerful for you to focus upon than one thing that you doubt in other words so you want to use the things that you believe most as your reason to focus because when you take a, a desire for something that you believe you can accomplish and you give your undivided attention to that thing in which you have belief now you've practiced the vibration of belief and now all the things that you want in that practice of belief must be allowed even if you've been practicing this idea of belief on a different subject than the other things does that make sense in other words there's resisting and there's allowing and it doesn't matter what you're using as your excuse to allow right. that's why we always say start with the easy things start with the things that you believe because when you focus upon the things that you believe you close the gap and when you close the gap you let in all the stuff you want helpful yes powerful to know now we interrupted you and you were going someplace really good okay um so in that in that sense um with a lot of different uh you know ideas coming forth but never manifesting many of them because i would get to a point where i'd be like well actually okay maybe i don't really want that particular thing or whatnot now i'm at a point where i'm very quite clear on everything we well, see things here's what we want. think happens and th see if this doesn't resonate with you this is what so many people do we're going to give you a very easy to follow depiction here so life causes you to want something and for a while you're writing about it and you're thinking about it you're visualizing about it and you're feeling pretty good about it and you're moving toward it now this is the this is an important distinction more than 99% of every creation is completed vibrationally before you see the physical evidence of it it's just the way it works you have to think a thought and get it really active in your vibration before the evidence is allowed in so and man has been telling that story in in a lot of different ways even in Genesis as man tries to describe the way God created the planet it is a it, it everything that is manifestation was first thought and thought upon a long time before the manifestation occurs well now all of you here in your leading edge expression you are following this same process of creating only it's easier for you the process of creating the gap between the inception of an idea and the full manifestation of it is very short now this this is the time of fast creating and so it doesn't take a lot of time but it does take steady direction and that's why we tell the story of Jerry and Esther going from Phoenix to Yuma which is halfway to San Diego about Phoenix Yuma and then back to Phoenix Yuma and then back to Phoenix Yuma and so what happens is and th this is the way we really want you to get a sense of this so life causes you to want something and you begin moving along pretty well toward it but then because you can't see the manifestational evidence of it then you don't hold your vision upon what you want you begin to look at what is and as you begin to look at what is then you live more contrast that gives birth to another desire and as you begin to turn your attention toward the new desire but it's taking longer than you want then you begin to notice what is so what happens is new contrast keeps showing up and getting your attention and muddying the waters of the pure thought about what you want and that's why your question feels so 
valid and is is my quest for so many different things what's slowing me down mm -hmm. and we want you to understand it's not the quest for different things that's slowing you down it's your not staying in the direction of any one of them long enough to see them to fruition you're taking score too soon you're looking for the physical evidence and feeling the discouragement in the lack of the evidence and then turning upstream because you're using something you're using a bogus indicator as your directional guide you're looking for manifestational evidence as your directional guide when you want to look for emotional response in other words as long as you're feeling optimistic it's in the process of becoming in the moment that you start doubting you've turned right. and and until you get optimistic again that one's done you might as well go on to another one you see so we just want you to find one thing that you feel optimistic about and everything you want will then happen isn't that interesting just find one thing that you feel optimistic about find one thing that you feel appreciation about give it your undivided attention and everything that life has caused you to ask for will come in a lot of people who begin doing this work with us report in something similar to that they say it feels like I have a rubber band stretched back really far and when I found this material I let go and a whole lot of things happened really quickly and we say because a little bit of allowing goes a long way because you've been asking and asking and asking and asking and asking oh you have such prolific vibrational es escrows oh so much in your vibrational escrow and when you chill out a little stuff starts getting in but then you start overdoing it in this deliberate creation stuff we called this for quite a while the science of deliberate creation but you took it all too seriously with see <laughs> suck suck you try to suck cancel cancel <laughs> try to suck your thoughts back before law of attraction gets hold of them oh I thought a thought of something that I don't want <laughs> what if law of attraction <laughs> gets hold of that and we say just chill out you are where you are your streams moving toward what you want this isn't a big deal you're worthy beings it's supposed to work out for you it's supposed to be fun you never get it done and you want this ride can you imagine Jerry and Esther staying to the river guide where will we take our boat out and he would say oh many miles downstream and they would say well we would like to put our raft back on the bus bus it down the canyon and put it in the river just a few hundred yards from where we're going to take it out because we like instant manifestation <laughs> and he was a very accommodating man he would have done that if they'd ask but he would have said all right crazy lady but I thought you wanted a ride on the river and this is the thing that we want to say to you you did not want you didn't come here in order to go immediately to all of those manifestations you gave here so that contrast could help you give birth to them so that you could contemplate and choose and decide you came into this creative environment so that you could focus yourself into alignment so that you could feel the satisfaction of some discord coming into alignment and the feeling of things clicking into place and then you could watch the manifestational evidence of your alignment and then you could with that new accomplishment now stand in a new set of contrasting experiences that would give birth to get more desire so that you could focus in the direction of it and feel the alignment of it and feel yourself clicking into place and then see the manifestational evidence of your alignment this is the joyous ride that you want not one of you we have never seen anyone say I'm going on vacation they tell their friends I'm going on vacation and I'm at home and I'm gonna go here and here and here and here and here and here and here in about two weeks I'm gonna come back home and then they say wait what was I thinking home is my final destination and I'm already home why go <laughs> I think I will just check vacation off my list I've accomplished my vacation and it was so much less expensive and we say you didn't go on the vacation to get it done you went on the vacation for the fun along the way for the new ideas for the stimulation of thought for the interesting things that would occur for the mixing it up for the opportunity to create the, and that's the way you felt about this life experience none of you said I'll go forth I'll decide what I want and I'll get it I'll decide what I want and I'll get it. I'll decide what I want and get it. You said, I'll go forth and I'll mix it up. And I'll know what I don't want, which will help me to get clear about what I do want. Mm -hmm. And I'll do that all day, every day until I formulate my idea of the life that I would like to live.